Okay, welcome back. It's been a little while, and we are back with our next unit on fractions. And we are focusing today on benchmark fractions. And the objective reads, what are benchmark fractions? So we're just looking really for the definition of benchmark fractions today. And I'm going to list the most common examples of benchmark fractions. We have one out of four, one fourth or one quarter. We have one half, one out of two, three quarters or three out of four, and one tenth. These fractions are the most commonly used and they help us to compare to other fractions. As I'm drawing a picture of each of these fractions, I want you to do the same because it's going to help us compare our fractions. So I have one out of four parts for one half. I have one out of two parts, three fourths. I have three out of four parts. And one tenth is really going to be important for us this unit. Is this going to help us work with decimals and decimal language? And one tenth. Each of those is called a benchmark fraction. So, benchmark fractions are the most common or famous fractions that help you to compare. So when I say famous fractions, you know of four fractions that you can use to compare to other fractions. Let's try that quickly as we compare some fractions together. So let's use the most common famous fraction or benchmark fraction, one half. And to compare, I'm going to use a number line today. So on this side, I'm going to have zero, and on the other, I have one whole. And we call these benchmark or famous fractions because they're really easy to work with. So right in the middle, I know we have one half because it splits our one whole into two pieces. So now we're going to compare to five eighths. So we have our number line drawn. I'm also going to use a picture to help us. So I'm going to draw a picture of one half. And I'm going to use smiley faces. I'm drawing two because that's my denominator. And I'm going to circle one to show I have one out of two. Now we have five eighths. So let's look at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to circle one, two, three, four, five of my smiley faces. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, I only have two pieces here, but I have eight pieces down below. What can I do about that? Well, I'm going to have to make my denominators the same in order to compare. And we always go to the larger of the two denominators. So I need to make eight smiley faces where I had one half. Now I need to ask myself, I have eight smiley faces, this one representing five eighths, this one one half. I have to think how many smiley faces out of the eight that I have shows one half of them. So I have to choose one out of every two, one out of two. So I have one out of two, circle one, out of two. One out of two. 
1 out of 2. Now I'm looking at it and I see I have 1, 2, 3, 4 smiley faces circled out of 8. So I just made an equivalent fraction too. You're learning a ton of things today. We're comparing fractions, benchmark fractions, and equivalent fractions. And now I can compare 4 eighths and 5 eighths because it has the same denominator. So when I'm looking on my number line that I have above, now I can write my equivalent fraction, 1 half equals 4 eighths. Now I know that 5 eighths is greater than 4 eighths, which we also know is 1 half. So on my number line, I need to place 5 eighths a little bit more than 4 eighths. So we're going to continue to use benchmark fractions, equivalent fractions, and comparing fractions as we, take, as we continue. Good job, boys and girls.